Hello, this is John, <clears throat> host of MGTOW is Freedom. Another early start for me, and already my mind is erasing. <laughs> racing, that is, not erasing. <clears throat> I want to thank all you guys for commenting, for watching, for subscribing, for clicking like, for clicking that little bell so you get notifications. So do those things. Subscribe, like, hit the bell, and of course, share. And I always say, be sure and share with young men you know in your lives. Young men uh, need the most help because they have the least experience with what truly it is they're facing. And that is a social engineering program called feminism that's designed to destroy them as men. They don't realize it because feminism plays on men's natural desire to care for or protect. And we know instinctively, and we know from physical reality, that men are superior to women in strength, in mental endurance, in rational thinking. And it is reinforced by our own personal realities. So they use that to get us to protect women. And in order to protect them, what they want us to do is to sacrifice ourselves. Sometimes they refer to it as self-castration. Right? <clears throat> so I've got a, uh, a long, long, long time subscriber, Carl G. And he sent me an email uh, asking me to talk about a subject. He says, he says I'm an old fart, John. Uh, I re <clears throat> and he appreciates the videos, and, and I really appreciate Carl's comments and some of the private messages I get from him. But he is saying that um, he knows that a big part of my channel is focused on young guys. MGTOW is Freedom is about helping the young guys. And I'll explain why. It's because the young guys are the ones who are finding these, these, these newest versions of feminism coming out. The most empowered, the most entitled, the most fucked up. And they're the next generation, and these young men are going to have another generation of children with these man-hating hags. And the next generation of children is going to be even more indoctrinated. They're going to be even more lost. So that's why I want men, young men, to be aware of what's going on. But Carl asks, hey, how do you live with this, though? You know, your, your videos are about the fuck it upness <laughs> or fucked upness of the the relationship between men and women how do we how are we supposed to live it how should we live it and i think that's a great comment thank you carl great question is how should we live with women you know <clears throat> let's just say for example and i think this is where carl was going let's just say that men realize that things are fucked up and women realize that things are fucked up and they both want to fix it right there's a cooperative effort everybody wants to get along but the system is so hopelessly mired in stupidity that no one knows really what to do so what do we do well you know it's okay john what do you think and that's where i'm at with this john what do you think well you know, we're all naturally gifted with things. I do not want midgets playing basketball. They're not tall enough, right? <laughs> I, I don't want people who are mentally handicapped running nuclear power facilities. Right? I want the strongest, the smartest, the most capable of every human doing what they do best, what they're physically and mentally suited for and naturally capable of. That makes the most sense, does it not? Why is society trying to shoehorn everyone into some role that they're not meant to fit in? As if it's some grand experiment that has no consequences. So let's assume that everyone does have a role, does have a place, does have an ability. <clears throat> How should men and women live together? Let's start off with this. 
let's look at traditional relationships and I'm going to add my take on it and explain why it worked. Number one, girls used to be raised to play with dolls and then they were helping their mothers in the fucking kitchen, learning to clean house and take care of house and take care of the man. Pow, right there, the girl is brought up conditioned that if she wants a man, that is, she wants a man, she needs to learn to satisfy him because men are more capable of earning more money for longer periods of time and dealing with those types of stress and those types of rigors, period. Okay, so the little girl is raised that way. When she gets to age 15, she starts thinking about marriage. Now the modern concept or the modern paradigm <clears throat> has boys and girls trying to get together in their same age groups so that there is a, well, there isn't parody. But the claim is, is that they belong together. The fact is they do not. Young women are far more sophisticated in relationships because of the social training they get as young girls. They are far more capable of surpassing and dominating men in relationships where they are of similar age. That is incorrect. That is a bad social norm to set. John says, if you want to fix the world, fuck no, bad mistake. Bad mistake. It's not that they're more intelligent. It's just that's what they do. Boys play games and play by the rules. Girls learn social manipulation and how to get around the rules. They're far more sophisticated. You want to fix the world? Stop dating women your age. Period. Period. So, how does this system work? How should it work, John? Right, well, this is how it should work. A man should grow up. A man should go through all his education. At age 18, he moves out. He gets his own house, whether he's renting or buying. He develops his trade or his skill. He's done with college and he has a good job. If he goes to college or if he goes to trade school, personally, I think trade schools are the way to go and the wave of the future. But be that as it may, either way, the man has a job, is making money, owns a house. Somewhere between the age of 25 to 30, he can start thinking about marriage. That is owning and keeping a woman in his house. This is the way this should go. All young men, should avoid women altogether. And by altogether, I mean serious relationships. If, you know, go get a job, get a house, get a life, get a path built before involving someone else. And certainly not involving someone else who's going to manipulate you for their benefit. Because if women make bad decisions, they're going to take you down and them down with it, and they don't even realize they're hurting themselves. Facts, facts, facts. The facts do not lie. That is what women do to themselves. Look at what they've done to our nation. Personal debt, national debt, just stupidity on the rampage. Right, okay. <clears throat> so, a man, let's just make him 28 years old. He decides he's going to get married. He finds a woman who is 10 years younger than him. 10. At age 28, a man is most capable of starting a family because he has a good job and a house. He has a platform from which to raise the family and be a good husband. The woman at age 18 has finished her education. She knows what she needs to know to go through life. She is now ready, both physically and mentally, to be a mother. What is the purpose of fucking being married if it's not to have kids? So if you're not gonna have kids, don't fucking get married. But if you're asking me how young men should have relationships if they wanna get married and have kids, this is how you do it. The man is 28. He is more mature. He is more experienced. He is more most capable and he has proven himself proven himself to be a man by having a job, the start of a great career, whatever it is, a house, a car, then the girl can see him 
as a good husband, a good provider, a good father, right? He is now set, she is now set to do their jobs. She is not his age or older. She is less sophisticated, so she doesn't feel that she needs to compete with him. The modern concept, the modern paradigm of relationships is to pit the man and woman against each other so that both of them compete to see who dominates in any given area of household activity. Who's going to be the domestic partner? Who is going <clears throat> to control the money? Who is going to make decisions, life decisions, retirement decisions, even employment decisions? How about geographic decisions, where they're going to live? Who their friends are going to be? You don't let someone who is naturally incapable of making good decisions make these decisions. Yet, the modern paradigm suggests that that's exactly how it should be. You want the solution, I'm telling you, the man should make the decisions. Now, the woman should be allowed to participate in this process. She should be allowed to participate in the process of decision making. That is putting her input in. Her ideas, her notions, her wants. But someone has to be the boss. Who better to be the boss than the person who is most capable and has the best track record of good decision making? The man. Now, obviously, I think everyone is starting to see that I'm <clears throat> proposing a masculine dominated relationship. No shit! <laughs> I wish more feminists would be on here complaining and whining so I could fucking hammer them down. The reason our culture is failing, the reason our society is falling on its ass, is because it is gynocentric, not penis-centric. It has shown itself to be an absolute fucking abject failure. Gynocentrism is a failure. We need to get fucking women out of the driver's seat, out of the cockpit. It's called a cockpit for a reason. It's not a cunt pit, it's a cockpit. Right? That is the seat, like this one right here I'm in, from where things are driven and steered, and the speed at which they go. The man needs to be in charge. The relationship needs to be set so that when the woman meets the man, he is already in charge. He makes the decisions. He's been practicing making decisions and proven he's good at making decisions. The pattern is decisions. Decisions, decisions, decisions. And who is the boss? The woman can contribute a lot. 49.5%. But the man needs to be the boss. That is... He needs to be the one who makes the decision on tiebreaker efforts. If he thinks something and she thinks something that are the same, and they do what they both want, who's the boss? Well, well he is. He's still 51%. Okay? He's still 50.5%. It's just her idea happened to coincide with his. Now, here's an important key. After a number of years, as the girl who is 18 has kids and grows up and sees the wisdom of the husband's decisions, they will naturally become her decisions. She will start to see on a natural, accepted basis that he is the boss and he is right. And there is no reason for argument. She doesn't have to capitulate anything because she starts to think she has been trained to see the world on a decision-making reality that comes from the man. It is, it is masculine-led. So that is how I see relationships need to start. How can men live with women? How can it work? I don't, I, I, you know, I fucking hate it when people say, oh, traditional and conservative, whatever, is just wrong, and who gives a fuck? Well, you know, you guys got here somehow, right? It was because a guy stuck his cock in a girl and had an orgasm. That's how it fucking works. So you got here. Are we going to keep doing the same program that fails and fighting women and men? You know, it sucks. It's stupid. For now, I'm saying fuck them, right? Until they're starved to death and they come back to the table. But any man, if you're going to get a woman, she needs to be younger than you. 
She needs to realize you're the boss. You need to be the one in charge of the fucking money. 